Ishok, the well-being of many, many, if not most, of our students is not in a good place. The email that Holly, the student nurse from Athlone, sent to, I think, all of us uh, is emblematic of the crisis that is facing many students. Uh, she talks about something that we put a motion forward, actually I remember, during COVID, about the failure to pay student nurses on placement, and you can add to that those in mental health, nursing, early childhood education, medicine, social care, and many other areas, where they are being exploited, working in our health service, and paid nothing. Do you know in Scotland how much student nurses get? 10,000 sterling per year. 10,000 sterling. Here, people doing the same thing, zero. It's disgraceful. And as she points out, is it any wonder that people qualifying in these areas then leave the country because they feel totally undervalued? I was at the IADT, which I'm sure you're familiar with, last week at the student union protest. And one of the big features of the students' uh, protest and the speeches was the, first of all, the accommodation, cost of living, and financial crisis, huge numbers of students are facing, the cost of accommodation, the unavailability of accommodation, but also the mental health stress that they are suffering, the lack of supports in terms of mental and physical health for students, and the pressure just to say it's just too much. Now, when we are suffering chronic Deputy, shortages you. in so many areas of healthcare, construction, you know, other areas of the economy, why are we not giving these students the support and valuing them in the way they deserve? In Deputy, the way, for example, in Scotland they do with student nurses. Uh, and everywhere else in Europe they do far better for our students. Uh, to Deputy Boyd Barrett. Look, I think, and as I said er earlier on at Leaders' Questions, we did try to take a number of measures to assist student nurses uh, post the COVID period. Uh, fourth year student nurses get paid in Ireland, uh, first to thirds don't, but there are supports available and there has been, according to the Minister for Health earlier in this house, a significant increase in the level of that support since COVID and quite rightly so. However, as the Minister has said to me today, he's very happy to engage further with nurse representative bodies uh, in relation to this issue and I'd like to see that happen too. I would just say on the issue of mental health funding and I accept there's a real challenge for mental health amongst our young people, uh, exacerbated by COVID, but not what it was there before, but exacerbated by COVID. I certainly know during my time as Minister for Further and Higher Education we did significantly increase the mental health funding to our universities following engagement with our student unions. I'll inquire further on that. And we have obviously taken a number of measures. You would argue it's not enough, and, and, and I take your point, but the student assistance fund is up. Susie grants are up well ahead of inflation. College fees are being reduced, and the renter's tax credit uh, has been extended.